Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to be talking about something that people get extremely passionate about it seems, and that's my favorite handgun, uh, the SW99. So again, here's my little Pelican 1170, my master lock, flick it open, and here is the beauty. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to talk about how this gun works, why I really like it, and those are sort of going to dwell into each other. So, first steps first, removing it from there, empty, empty magazine. Now, as you might already know, the SW99 is pretty much the American-made version, I guess, of the Walther P99. And the reason I chose this, there is actually a reason. It's not just because it was American-made, though that was very cool. It's because, as you probably know, Smith & Wesson has a lifetime warranty on all of their firearms. So that alone makes me love the Smith & Wesson's SW99 compared to the Walther. Even though it's cool to have the same gun as James Bond, the fact that 60 years from now I can mail this in and say the firing pin broke and they'll fix it, that's damn good customer service to me. And I actually did do that. I, uh, there were no real problems with it, but I actually just sent it in just to have them check it up. And they checked it up, and they even re-blued my decocker button over there, which I'll go into later. And like I said, that's top-tier customer service. So now that we know the gun's empty, I'm going to go over a few different aspects of this gun and how it differs from a lot of guns. First things first, there is no actual safety on this gun. The safety has to do with the trigger, sort of like a Glock, and I'll get into that in a second. But it has a very set of cool features, first of all. This red indentation on the back will show you whether or not the hammer, in this case the striker, is cocked back. So when you see this little red dot, it is in fact cocked. And at the same time, if you're in a dark situation, you can actually feel it with your thumb. Again, the Walther P99 was designed for German military special forces and the police system over there. So. It has a lot of cool features which are meant for high stress situations, including this, to where you can check to see if your gun's cocked, you know, without needing to have a flashlight or something. At the same time, you have this decocker button, so if you're ever in a situation where you don't want the gun to be cocked, as you can see, the red dot went away, and when you feel over here, there's no little metal pole sticking out anymore. So to explain how this gun works, and it's actually a very interesting gun, I'm going to get some sexy little snap caps, put them in. I'm going to use two for this to show you a few different aspects. Put it in, and before I do that, you'll see here, just notice how that looks. Now notice how there is a little red mark there. That shows you there is actually a live round in the chamber, or any round, it doesn't have to be live, but it shows there is actually a case in there pushed up into the chamber, into the barrel. So that's another cool aspect. So right now, just by looking at the gun, I can tell that there is a round in the chamber, that the striker is primed, and let me explain how this trigger pull works. Now it's not primed anymore. So this has a double action, single action trigger, which is useful for safety, as well as for high stress situations. The general idea is that your first pull, if your gun is not cocked, or if your striker isn't pulled back, is a long and heavier pull. As you can see, it requires a bit of force. When I'm doing this, it's not actually hard, but you can see the striker come back, and then bam, it fires. So again, back, bam, fires. And when you do that, what happens is, that's the first round. It shoots just like that. The bullet shoots out, the projectile shoots out. This goes back, shoots that out, and bam, catches the new one. Now from this point on, the gun is already cocked. And the next round, you actually have a very, very short, notice where that is, very light trigger pull. So the idea is that you leave your gun for that first round uncocked, so that if you're in a situation where all of a sudden you're extremely stressed out and you have a lack of control over those very finesse motions because of your adrenaline, you're not going to accidentally discharge your weapon and shoot a innocent bystander or, you know, not be aiming where you want to be aiming. By doing this, you still are able to pull the trigger relatively easily, 
but first of all, you're not going to be doing any accidental discharges. You're going to be very well aware of what you're doing. And the idea is that once you've made that solid aware idea of what you're shooting, you've made that shot, every round from that point on, so you do this trigger pull, you shoot, bam. Every round from then on is a shorter, much lighter pull, so you can quickly follow up and make a few more shots if you need them. The other aspect about this single action, double action trigger pull is that if, in fact, you pull the trigger and for some reason the gun doesn't fire, this doesn't stick at the slow or the low uh, pre-cocked trigger pull. It goes back to the double action pull, which means all you have to do at that point is pull the trigger again. So you'll see that I'm just pulling the trigger and that double action is working right now. So again, if you're in a high stress situation and for some reason the bullet doesn't fire, you have a few more chances of just pulling that trigger to see if it does before your mind is able to realize, okay, I'll, uh, I'll move to that next round. So the idea again with this trigger system and why I love it so much is that especially for self-defense, you're very unlikely at this point to, to shoot you know, haphazardly or be unaware of what you're doing because of a high stress situation. And at the same time, if for some reason one of your bullets don't go off um, you know, when you expected them to, or something goes on, or there's a, it's a light primer tap, or something's going on with that, you still have the ability to just pull the trigger without needing to worry about, again, in that high stress situation, fumbling and getting things figured out. So again, just because the trigger system is a bit confusing to some people, the first one, if you haven't cocked it back, is going to be a long and heavy pull. You shoot that round, bam. Every single round from then on is a short pull. And if for some reason you shoot, bam, and even if the thing was cocked and you shoot and for some reason the bullet doesn't go out, you go immediately back to that double action pull, so you don't need to worry about recocking the gun or anything. But, let's say you have a bullet in there, and for some reason you decide to decock it, you don't need to worry about that long pull if you don't want to. If you're in a situation where you know there's gonna be, you know, a use for your gun immediately and you're calm and collected, all you do is barely pull this back and let go, and the striker will be primed, so you can either have a, at that point you'll notice the trigger's in the same place, so you can either have a long but very light trigger pull, or you can actually preset it to the back and have a short and light trigger pull. So if it's cocked, for your first shot, you can either have a long trigger pull that's light, or you can pre-cock it just like the Glock's length and have a short picker pull. Let me know if you guys have any questions. I know it's a little bit of an interesting gun, but like I said, it's definitely my favorite gun, especially for self-defense, for the reason of that trigger system and the decocker. I'll see you guys.